Hello and welcome to Discover Dorico uh, for March 2024. Um, so, uh, hello and welcome to oh, Discover oh, Dorico uh, for oh, March joy. 2024. Bear um, with me a second. So, uh, Let's try that again. I think we'll be okay. So, hopefully you can hear me, and only once. So that, that's even better. There's obviously a tab open somewhere, play me. Sorry about that. So, um, thank you for joining live. Uh, if you're watching this again, then on catch up or anything else, um, then uh, also welcome. And there'll be some links and kind of chapter headings and things like that that you can click on underneath if you're not watching this live. Um, while we're kind of just, you know, checking everything's working, let me know in the chat, in the comments, uh, if, if everything's working for you at your end. Click on the little cog if you need to, make sure that the screen resolution is up as high as you can get it, because um, this should be um, relatively clear. And we've got some people in the chat, so I will try and answer those comments as we go. Before we start, have you sent me yet your Switch story? Um, so these switch stories are um, little videos that we'd like you to send us. So if you haven't already, I'm just going to put this link in the chat actually, so that you can uh, click on that one. Um, so this one, if you have a look at this article, says, "Can you record me a little short video, please? Uh, do it in landscape on your on your phone. Keep it simple. Doesn't need any graphics or anything else. And just tell us why you've tried, why you've decided to try Dorico." Um, how you approached it, um, so you know how you switched from your previous program, why you think it's been worth it. Send us a video. You can do it if you want to as an unlisted video on YouTube, or just email me at discoverdorico at steinberg.de. That would be great. Um, um, we'd like to include some of these videos in a new little campaign to encourage more people to also use Dorico. So if you could send me a little video, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Click on the link um, and um, I'll put it underneath the video after the session, but it's in the chat at the moment if you're watching live as well, so that you can send me a little video. That would be fantastic. Um, not maybe quite as important, but I should also tell you there is a Cubase promotion happening at the moment. So if you try, want to try out Cubase 13 or you want to upgrade, then uh, you can save 30% at the moment. Let's put that one in the chat as well. There we go. Um, so if you want to click on that link, then um, the, there is a discount at the moment on Cubase. I think it's about a month, yeah, about a month. Um, so yes, if you're interested in that, then you can get 30% off. And it also, as you scroll down this page, it will tell you, you know, Cubase Elements 13 upgrade, you know, if you're buying it new or if you want to upgrade just from £17.50. Um, and also you get a bunch of other things with it as well. Oh, the images have stopped loading on my uh, mine, but there you go. So you get a bunch of other products as well. So if you scroll down that page, it will tell you about all of those. So today's session, let me just check. You can hear me all OK, I think. Looks like it. Stephen's going to send me his video later in the week. Thank you very much. Um, so today's session, we're going to talk about this, which is the a free plugin from Native Instruments, and it's the Jacob Collier Audience Choir. And I thought this was maybe a fun session that we could have a look at. Um, if you're new to Dorico and you've never used Dorico before, then you can do everything I'm going to do in this session in the free Dorico SE. So you can use extra VST plugins, even when we look at video uh, options and you know, it's adding a video file and some of the other things that we'll do. They'll all be also available in the free version. So you can try this out in Dorico SE if you haven't tried Dorico before. Oh, I should give you a link to that too, shouldn't I? So let me just put this one in the chat. So if you've not used Dorico before, then dorico.com forward slash SE. Um, you can download the free version. This plugin you can get from here, which is the Native Instruments website. Put that one in the chat as well. There you go. So this is a free plugin, um, and it's uh, we'll, we'll look at how we can use this in Dorico today, um, and you can try it out and, and everything else. But it, it's free. So if nothing else, it's an option for you to try out a third-party plugin in Dorico and see how it all, how it all works. Um, this plugin, if you if you weren't aware before, um, this guy Jacob Collier, very clever, far cleverer than me. Um, he has sampled the audience at a bunch of his gigs. 
uh, from 22 cities across the globe. So they said from Adelaide to Zurich. Um, and we'll look at how we do this. So basically, he got the audience to sing notes, sampled those, and he's put them together in this plugin. And you can now use it if you want to in your pieces in Dorico and, and write music for it that way. Um, so there's various options that we'll look at in this plugin and, and everything else, and it tells you a bit about them, don't worry about the keyboards. How to get your free choir, so just scroll down on that page. You'll need Native Access 2, which is the native instrument system for the plugin. And if you already have an account, you can just click on the button, hit the button, it says, yeah, click on the button, and you can get the free audience choir. So I've already done that bit. I've made a, um, a template for this. So if you head over to our Dorico resources page, so dorico.com, forward slash resources there you go there's another link in the chat for you um, scroll down on this page and if you then go to playback templates like this then on this one there's a whole bunch of playback templates that you can get for Dorico and the new one that's on here uh, as of about half an hour ago is this one so you can download the Jacob Collier audience choir so download that and then you can follow along with this session if you want to in the full version, in Elements, or in Dorico SE, doesn't matter. Um, you will obviously need the plugin to make everything work, the, the, the Jacob Collier plugin. Um, but once you've got that, follow along. If you want to press pause now, you can do, but otherwise, just come back to this and, and watch this session. So, you can get that free plugin, and we can load that up in Dorico. So, in there, as well as the playback template, I've included an audience choir uh, template file with it all set up in Dorico. So the idea is you can just load this file, you'll get a choir and a vocal percussion stuff, we'll look at how we'll use that one in a bit, and you can automatically then uh, use this for any of your projects or start using this plugin. So if you have the plugin installed, and you have Dorico installed of course, and you just load this Dorico project which is in the zip file you download from the website, then you'll get to this point. What Dorico will do when it loads this file is in play mode, it will automatically load the Jacob Collier Audience Choir. It's using the Native Instruments free um, plugin for that, the contact plugin. Um, so it, when you're in play mode here and you select, for example, the choir staff, if you click on the little E button, then it will load the interface like this. So this is the Audience Choir plugin itself. Um, there's a few things we can look at in this one. So um, basically, each of the notes down here, if I click on them, then you should hear them. I'm just going to use our little mixer and turn these up actually to make sure you're hearing everything as loud as possible. Um, if you want to bring the plugin window forward, if it kind of goes behind your windows and you want a shortcut for that, you can set one by the way. If you go to the Dorico preferences or on a PC edit preferences, you can then go to key commands and if you search for show VST, then in here you can set a shortcut, I've set F1 for today, for show VST plugin window. So the idea is then you can choose a an option here, one of the tracks here in play mode, or you can choose the staff here, and when you press your shortcut then the little audience plugin will load up like that. So as I said, you can click on these keys, and for each one of these notes you'll see which cities it was recorded in, so he's blended them together. So. They sound very similar, those two Cs, but they're in different cities. And if you have a MIDI keyboard, then you can play these as well. So if I just pr pr press notes on my MIDI keyboard... So it then it's showing up, it's polyphonic. So as you play chords, you'll you'll hear them, you'll see the interface light up. So there's there's a few kind of um, fun things you can do with it that way. If nothing else, and this I've set, I think I've set it, it might be the default, is this, um, it says R-E-U-R, it's not actually Old MacDonald, just feels a bit like it, but these are kind of common sounds, I guess, that people use for choirs, um, without, of course, having to do vocals. Wouldn't that be lovely one day, if you can actually sing lyrics, but not yet. Um, so what you can do with this one is, in here, if you want to move this, it's set to R by default. But if you want to change it, you can just drag this around and it will change to something else. And you can just do it as you're playing. So if I hold down the note and just move this... So it's got various options just when you're um, uh, in here. It's also got some other preset things. So if you click on this little play button here, and then you turn on the loop function here to forward, then it will uh, play this loop. So if I just play a note without touching the mouse, so it's got a pre-recorded little loop in there, 
Um, and if you want to, you can set up your own options for these, but it's got a few a few things in here anyway. And uh, there's also, uh, for example, you can go between these ones instead. So it goes a bit down to R, and then it goes a bit over to O. Um, you can do things like full circle. And you can do fun things like spin. Just playing different notes, make it a bit more interesting. And it's got things like waves and bounce and things like that as well. Bounce, hmm. Waves. And let's play a chord with bounce. If you've seen any Jacob's videos, and I'm presuming you have, that definitely feels like he's programmed that. That feels like the kind of thing he would yeah, have programmed. Anyway. So those those options exist down here, and there's a playback speed option as well. And now you can get Dorico to trigger those if you want to as well. So I'm just going to put this plugin window over here. I'm going to put the Dorico window over here for a second, um, and then if I in Dorico here, so I'm just going to double click. I'm just going to say we'll just add some uh, whole notes at the moment and play a chord. Um, so I get that that chord here. I suppose uh, actually, if you need to, you can put the carrot over both staves, so use shift and the down arrow, and then uh, play that chord in. Of course, it depends where your MIDI keyboard is as to, you know, which notes you'll get, but it'll play that chord. So, if I play this one, you'll see that that's playing this, but also with the play button on and the forward button, it's moving. Now, if I play other chords in here, so let's... Um, I'm not, uh, I didn't really think this through. Uh, let's say we'll do... Uh, no, let's do... Uh, that'll do. So, each one of these chords... You see, it's annoyingly restarting that loop every time, each time it has a new chord. So what you want to do is blend them together. It's a, the plugin's presuming that you'll kind of blend the notes together. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just, on these, just add a slur. Um, you, could put, you could press F if you want to flip it and, and put it above, but it doesn't matter. As long as there's a slur, then Dorico in the key editor at the bottom is going to blur these notes together. So if I use this option here to for play durations, you'll see there's a tiny overhang between all of these. So because there's an overhang on those chords, then when I press play here... So it will keep playing the, the the loop at that point. So if you were to use one of these, like uh, let's say waves again, then when I press play, then it will go through the whole the whole motion. So, so you get the idea. So you can use this, um, optionally use this, this um, plugin for these play functions. Now it may just be that you turn that play thing off and you just leave this on R and that's how the, the file will load by default because that's all you need and then it will play everything you know, as you'd expect. Um, I said there's also playback speed, so if you want the, the effects in here to happen quicker, then you can also use that one as well. Um, some of the other things in here, um, Dorico will control the dynamics for you, so if you select one or more notes, um, let's do Shift D and say we want to go from PP up to FF, then when you press play, you'll notice down here the dynamics control. So that will move automatically. You'll also see down here the mod wheel is moving as well, and that's just because they're controlling the dynamics with CC1 uh, with the mod wheel. So that one is also set up in the in the plugin for you. Um, there are a few things that you may or may not need. So I'm not really using the triad blend option. I haven't adjusted any of these options at the bottom, but feel free to have a play with those if you want to. I'm also not using the chord generator option at the top because I don't think we need that. If you turn that on, then when you play one note, then it will play a chord. 
but you probably don't want that if you're writing chords in Dorico. So that one is turned off by default. There's also a little cog button over here, and this is a little bit hidden. Um, in here, there are a bunch of other things. You can turn on and off the animations, but that's no fun, so we'll leave that one. There's also greyed out here a tuning section, and if you've, again, watched any of Jacob's videos, then you'll probably understand why. Um, if you turn on the tuning section, then you can choose from a bunch of different tunings, and these are then uh, some of the preset options in here. So when you play a chord, it will use these tunings. Um, obviously I'm just playing different notes at the moment, but it will use those different tunings for different chords. One of the interesting ones actually is the dynamic pure tuning, because um, if you do this one, then depending on what you play, it's adjusting at the time, depending on the notes you've played. Uh, and if I um, play a 7th, and then turn on this natural 7th, then you can see, and here, there's a much bigger difference to the 7th at that point as well. So that may be of interest depending on what you're doing. Uh, of course, also, if you are writing anything where you want Dorico to control that, then the pitch bend options are also active. And in here, in Dorico, in the expression map, which is included, so it's this Jacob Collier Audience Choir one, I've already set the pitch bend option up here. So if you are writing anything where you want to write some, uh, you know, three quarter tones or anything else, and you actually want to notate those kind of things and use that in a different way, you can do that in Dorico as well if you want to. Um, actually, I should say you can't set up new tunings in Dorico if you're using Dorico SE or Elements, um, but you would need Dorico Pro for that bit. But if it's been set up, so if you have one that you want, let me know, um, then I can set it up in Dorico Pro and you can use it then in Dorico SE um, or Dorico Elements if you want to. So yeah, so there's some tuning options here if you want them. Um, there's also a vocal, uh, sorry, a vowel morph pad. So what this is doing is it gives you the option, should you want it, of being able to control the X and Y axis. So the X axis and the Y axis, you could put two different MIDI CC controls on there if you wanted to, and you could control with MIDI data where this is going. So basically what you could do in Dorico then, and I haven't set this up at the moment, but let me know if you want it. I wasn't sure if people would. But one of the options you could use is you could add automation here for a MIDI CC whichever one you've decided you want to use. Um, and then you could choose that MIDI CC lane. So for example, at the moment, CC one's already here for dynamics. And you could draw in with the pencil tool or the line tool, and you could draw in the data here, which would then either do the X axis or the Y axis of this graph. And so you could move it to wherever you wanted to, if you wanted to blend that. And it may also be an interesting option because you could, for example, set a playing technique, so the playing techniques panel over here, you could set a playing technique for different vowel sounds and get that to do the control if you wanted it in your particular piece. Let me know if that's of interest and, and I'll, I'll look at adding that, but I haven't added it at the moment. So at the moment, by default, it's just going to, it's going to play the dynamics and it's going to play just the R sound unless you adjust this uh, manually yourself. So that's the, you know, the, the, the first bit with this one. Um, also, I said there's this vocal percussion bit at the bottom. Um, so the vocal percussion section is... Um, actually, we can ignore these orange buttons up here as well. All of these orange ones are some different triads and things that, that, that are being sung, but we're not going to worry about those ones right now. We're going to worry about these yellow ones. So these ones is a vocal percussion kind of bit where basically the audience have been recorded again, but doing foot stamps, hand claps, and various other things. So this one is actually, it's the two octaves above middle C. So middle C on this plugin is showing a C3. So it's two octaves above that. So on your MIDI keyboard, you can play um, the C for foot stomp. You can play the C sharp, the E, there's bing and bong. Yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, and maybe. Um, so I did a little vocal percussion stuff down here, and if you um, enable this one, then you can say you've got foot stomp and hand clap, finger click, bing and bong, yes, no, and maybe. Um, and for all of these, you'll also see as you're doing them, because Dorico labels these as you select things, I've made the short name um, an emoji, because why not? It was uh, more obvious than writing out foot stomp. Um, so hand clap and a finger click, bing and bong, didn't have any choices for those so I've added those as they are, yeah. and then thumbs up, thumbs down, no. and maybe. shrug, maybe. 
So you can use these as well if you want to, and may you might want to use this with the, the choir or you know or, or with something else. So when you're using these, if you go into setup mode as well, the choir and the vocal percussion are the two players that I've added by default. But you can add other um, uh, vocal um, singers staves to this. So if I do Shift P and add another singer in here, you can add things if you want to, like soprano and tenor and those kind of things. Um, but you could, you've also just got options like voice, so it might be that you're not specifying and you just want to save voice. So if I add one of these to this project, then we've got the vocal percussion and we've got voice. So it may be that when you're using this one, you want to use it this way, just with a, a single staff instead of the choir staff. Um, but it's going to load the same plugin, so by default, uh, when you're using this project, the voice will also load another instance of the plugin. You see this one's using two, this one's using three, and this one's using four. So it's just automatically loading that for you. It's doing that because of the playback template, and we'll look more at the playback templates uh, in a minute. So it's doing that automatically. So it's loaded the voice sample, so... So I can still use this one either for individual notes, or if you want to play chords, then of course you still can, you know, no problem. Um, but I thought what, one of the things you might want to do is also use the vocal percussion bits at some point um, uh, and use those. So you can also, of course, do live MIDI recording with these. Let me just add some extra bars. So let's say over here we wanted to do some vocal percussion for some reason. I also find with these kind of things it's easier to use these in Galley View. So if you switch to Galley View then you've just got one long continuous stream of music to work in. Um, so on this vocal percussion option here, if I have my MIDI keyboard set for two octaves above middle C and I press record, either the record button up here um, or just press the shortcut. So you've got all of these options and they should, you know, they'll notate. I've picked some notation for them, they sort of seemed like they wanted that kind of note head. A snare drum would normally have that kind of note head. Obviously there's lots of different ways that you can change the notation for this because it's all operating as percussion staves. So you can see some of our other videos on percussion staves if you want to for some of those. Um, and then these are working as well. I, they felt a bit like maybe symbols, so I put them up there, and maybe I just didn't know, so I've put it in the middle with a, a diamond gnome, you know, I, I don't know why. So all of that will then work very much like a, a percussion kit would, but what you can also then do, of course, is in setup mode, if you want to combine these onto one uh, player, you can take your vocal percussion here and drop it onto the voice, um, so that now... In galley view, you'll still see the two individual staves, but when you're in page view, then it will switch these back together. So the two v, v percussion and when it comes in will be labelled in here. And you could change these labels if you want to. We'll look at that in a second as well. Um, but you'll also notice that there's no clef change here. And that's simply because when I've set this instrument up, I'm presuming you don't really want to have a percussion staff. So this one here doesn't have a sorry a percussion staff doesn't want to have a percussion clef. So this one here, you'll see that I, there's an invisible clef there. You can of course put it back. You could either do that using the panel on the right hand side here. So you could add in a, um, well you could add treble clef as well if you wanted to. But you could add in a percussion clef if you wanted to in there. Um, you can also, and the way I've done it for this particular instrument is I've used the library menu in Dorico Pro for instruments. Um, if you click on this little filter up here, then it will tell you just the instruments in the score. And then this vocal percussion one here just says that it's using an invisible clef um, by default. Um, but you can change that if you wanted to ch change the instrument in there as well. So there's a little, you know, it, it might be useful. It, you know, maybe you want to use that. I don't know. Um, so if you want to use this in a in a new project, um, it will say in the in the file when you download it, of course, this project is, is set up and everything you want to, to be in there. But there's also a, um, a, a playback template. So let's say you were doing this on one of your own projects. So I'm just going to uh, close this one. Um, or let's say you'd started a project in Dorico, maybe from our um, hub here. So let's say we've got Coral SATB with Piano. Press Create Project. Now in the, um, the PDF that you will download, it will tell you in here that you want to load any Dorico project 
and go to the playback template option and do import and then there's a file you can import which is this Jacob Collier audience choir. So if you then select it, if I say apply and close, then it will, uh, you'll turn off the little play button up here. If you're on a Mac you'll get a little beach ball as well. And what it will then do in play mode is reload for all of these singers the Jacob Collier Audience Choir, and it's going to put a new instance in contact for each one of those four singers. Then when it's done, you've got the, the play buttons back, so everything's now loaded, and if you've set your shortcut, then you can click on any of these, you can press your shortcut, and it will bring up the Audience Choir um, that's, that's then preloaded for that one. The problem is that for your piano, there's no sound at all, and that's because this playback template doesn't have any other information apart from just choirs. So if you want to use this in your existing projects and you want to use this with your normal playback, then what you want to do is, in here, this was the default template that was loaded. So instead of, once you've imported the Jacob Collier Audience Choir playback template, don't choose it, but find your default one, the one that's chosen here, press the little duplicate button, and then go to Add Manual, and you won't have as many options as this. This is just because I've been working on a few other things. But there's the Jacob Collier Audience Choir will be in that list. You can choose it and put it at the top of the list with the little arrow button. That means that this one will load first. But because it only loads choirs, everything else will basically use this as its fallback for, for all of the other things. But all of the singers, so soprano, alto, tenor, you know, voice, lead, all of those kind of things, they will all use this entry here. If you need to be a bit more complicated and kind of set things up, you can also do instrument overrides for particular instruments or family overrides if you need it for all of the singers and, and that kind of thing. But in this case, we don't need to because this endpoint here only contains choirs. I'm going to give it a name, which is going to be um, Jacob Collier and the defaults because it's the, just the Dorico defaults. And I'm going to press OK. So that on my system just makes a new option here. So you can do this the same on yours. For whatever your normal playback template is, make a copy of it, add this extra option into it. Now when you press apply and close, the little green play button will go away. And then over here it will load everything in again. And so all of these will load with the Jacob Collier Audience Choir. And the piano will load with its default, which will be in Hallion. Hello, beach ball. Donk, donk, donk. There we go. So that will load into Hallion, and you get the green play button, and now we're all ready to go. So this will play from the choir, so will this, and this one, and this one, and this one will be a piano. So you can then add that, and uh, uh, whichever way you want it for, whichever singers you want to um, add it for, and make it your playback template so it's just an easy thing to switch in and out as and when you need it. Details, as I said, also in the PDF that's uh, being that download that I think I added earlier, hopefully. I did. So, um, in case you need it, it's in Dorico Resources in the Playback Template section. So, let me just put that in the chat again. And there'll be links underneath the video once we finish this session. Um, so, one of the ways I used this one was to do a little transcription of one of Jacob's gigs. So I'll load that one for a second. We'll close that one and load this one. So you can then see the kind of thing and see it all happening. So in this one here, um, I've also added the video. Um, so you can do that if you want to. And you can also do that in even in Dorico SE. Um, if you want to add a, a video file, then for, so for transcriptions and that kind of thing, it's quite useful. When you're in setup mode, if you right click on the flow, you can go to video and attach. Attach a video file, so choose the video file. It will pop up the properties window. And then I worked out that actually I wanted to start a second into the video. So I didn't need the first second, I wanted to start um, at that point. Um, you can choose various other options, like the frame rate, of course, if you need to. There, there's a time code option, there's flow attachment positions. If you need the video to start later in the flow, if you've got you know two bars of click in, start it eight beats in, that kind of thing. Um, but So that's the, the properties option. But it's all been... I've done that bit in this project. So I started with this one, and I started just with one staff, and then decided actually I was going to need more. So in here you can see there's a number of different contact windows. In fact, there's probably another one... Uh, oops, another one here yes so I'll, let's just see if i can position these let's put that one down there stand him there and there that sort of works let's move that one over a bit 
They don't really fit on this size window, do they? There we go. So I've got multiples. So in this one, if you've been to any Jacob Collier gigs, he's split this audience up into three sections. So all the people in the middle, all the people on the left, all the people on the right. Are you going to call them left and right? And is that from the stage view or from the audience view? That's up to you. In this case, I'm presuming I'm sort of writing parts for the people in the audience, and they would know if they were standing on the left or the right. So if I click on this note here, and you'll see the interface will light up for each one of these three for left, centre and right. So I just press play for a minute. Centre. Right. But obviously right from the audience point of view, not Jacob's point of view, but you can see as he's directing people in the video. I suppose to prove he did this live, if you like, um, then in the mixer at the moment I've muted the audio from the video. If I turn that on for a minute, I just move that out of the way, then this is the audio from the the gig. And this is the audio from and this is the audio from Dorico doing it. So I've then basically kind of gone through and as he's been directing people, I've kind of added note, notes into all of this so that it will then play back using the same plugin. So I just thought, you know, it was a an, uh, you know, uh, an interesting thing to do with these plugins in particular. And also because there's a video file then available. So if you are at any of his gigs, you might be in the sound of this, potentially. And if you're at the O2 gig or one of the others, then they're available, I think, on YouTube and, and various other places. And you can then have a look at those videos. Um, so the way I was doing this particular one, kind of you know, transcription-wise, is I decided that actually when I was listening to it, it had at least the idea of a pulse. So I used the option over here in the in the tempo section for the tap tempo and kind of tapped out what I thought kind of roughly the tempo would be and decided in the end it was about 74. So I started and added that just with the create button, added t a tempo of 74. And that meant that actually most of these changes that he was doing and, and directing were all actually on a beat, which was useful. So I put it in 4-4 for my own sanity really, um, so that I could kind of you know work out where things were, where the bars were and, and that kind of thing. Um, so I've also, as it's been going on, there's a few things where actually an Ichella and a Rural would make sense to kind of change things. I suppose I could have changed the rhythms instead, but actually this seemed to make sense for this particular style. Um, and the way you can do that is, of course, adding them as text up here, but also in the, uh, the section in the panel down here, if I just turn the video off for a moment, um, there is a tempo section. So where we were looking at the MIDI CC and the dynamics and things earlier, I, you can see the tempos as well. And as you choose these, then you can also edit them if you want to in the tempo lane down here. So here are some of the other options. And you know, if you choose one of these, then you can see which ones you're looking at. So this is this one here. So you can see and you can edit these. So if you need to edit them, actually the Dorico defaults were fairly good actually for, for what I needed for this. Um, there's an Atempo effectively here as well if you need it. But you can you can adjust them either graphically or in notation, however you, you want to do it. So let me just play a little bit more of this and then we'll um, see what's going on.
you can see there's a lot of running around on the stage to try and direct people as to you know which notes they're supposed to sing. It's very clever. I'm not quite sure how one person keeps the idea of where everybody. I don't think he's actually thinking of the chords. I think he's yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, so I decided you know that that was a, a useful option um, in here and a, and a good way of doing it. Now, of course, you can use our mixer to you know to set the balance of those three plugins for the different sections if you want to. Um, you can also, if I just expand this section down here, we had the little floating mixer, of course, earlier. You can use the mixer down here if you want to, so the same uh, mute and solo button. What you can also use, of course, is the live stage option here. So in the live stage, you can set where all of these people are. So there's a, a, a choir um, option as well in there. There's the center option and there's a right option. And so for each of the plugins, you can set where they exist on the stage and how far back they are, how far panned left and right they are. And you can set that up in, our, in the live stage if you want to as well. So for multiple singer staves, you can then get a much better stereo image um, if you want to. Uh, of course, there's also the live space option, so if you want to set how much reverb you want for any of those, then you can do that too. Um, so, I, yeah, I thought that was, you know, a, a, an interesting way of using this particular um, plugin. So have a play with that one and uh, and decide what you want to, to use it for. Um, now, also in this one, I did say there was a vocal percussion bit at the end, so I'll just turn off this instrument filter. Uh, and there's a vocal percussion option down here as well. So at the very end, they can cheer. The audience can cheer themselves. So if we just play from the last couple of bars, he was playing around with dynamics here. If you I don't know if you've seen the video, and then at the end here. <laughs> So you can have the plugin cheer itself by using the yeah well yeah why not so so anyway I'm sure you'll think that you'll think of much better options for using that vocal percussion uh, option but you know or if you just need maybe just that bit for a project with you know the foot stamps the, the claps the finger clicks all those kind of things then that may also be quite useful. For you. Oh pardon me. Um, so yeah so. Uh, you know, you've got those options. You can use it in the template file that you can download um, from the website, and also in there is a playback template and a couple of other options as well. And you can then add in uh, into the playback templates in here to your playback template that you normally use. Maybe it's our Dorico default one. You can add in the Jacob Collier bit and decide if you want, you know, when you want the singers to appear just with one button click. You can, of course, if you want to use these kind of things manually, you can do. So for any of the staves, it doesn't matter which instrument it is actually in Dorico, in the VST MIDI section, you can add in your own options into here. So you see a couple of these are just labeled Contact 7 because that's how it appears by default. So you can click the little plus button, you can add in your own option, so it would be native instruments, contact seven, and if you were doing this manually, then contact seven would appear. And what I've done is chosen the audience choir, double click on it over here, and it would load. Thank you. It will load another instance of the, the, the plugin in there. So if you need to, you know, route things manually or anything else, then you can do that. Um, you will probably also then, when you choose whichever instrument you're adding it to, in the track inspector, you'll also want to choose the right expression map. So in this one, it's just using mod wheel dynamics, but actually you'll find that there is now a, um, might not be in this file, but there is in the one I have given you a Jacob Collier option. No, it's not in there. So there's a Jacob Collier option if you need it. And also for the vocal percussion, there's a Collier choir option percussion map. And that percussion map has all of the options already mapped in there as well that you can use. So they're, they're available for you as well. So. Let's have a look at the chat for a minute and just see if there's any questions or anything else that anybody has about this particular option. Hang on a second. Oh, um, well done, Michael, for being quite so early to the session as well. Uh, I think you were here half an hour before the session started, so fantastic. Um, so yes, please send me your videos. So the, the Switch session videos, that would be great. Um, people are waiting for a seamless connection with Cubase. And it depends what they want to do with it, but we are, as a company, looking into more options there, so hopefully one day we'll be able to tell you more about those. Um, somebody else saying that they're a fan of Dorico, they switch from Finale. Send me your Switch video. So the um, the Switch sessions. So anybody who's saying, yes, I've you know switched from another program, where's it gone? Here it is. No, it hasn't. It's, oh, it's on my other monitor. There we go. So send me your Switch stories. Um, so, 
I'll put this in the in a link at the bottom as well. But yes, if you switch, then send me your switch videos. Let's get some more people uh, using Dorico and showing all these fantastic things we can do, and get some more compositions created. Um, somebody, Alan, met, actually met Marcus in Nuremberg. You met one of us in person. Um, we do occasionally get out. Uh, let's see. Um, how can I install a plugin? Probably depends whether you mean um, an instrument plugin like we've been using today or a VST kind of um, effect plugin. But basically, normally they all come with an installer, and if you install them, they will appear in Dorico, especially if it's a VST3. If it's a VST2 plugin, then um, there is an option in the preferences for whether or not they're allowed or blocked, because the VST2 plugins can be a little old these days. Um, but yes, basically, you can uh, you can uh, run them that way. And the way I just showed you in here with the contact plugin, they will they will show up in here. So whichever company you have a plugin loaded for will show up in there. But really, the best place to uh, the best way to use them uh, is probably with a playback template if one exists because you'll probably need things like expression maps and that kind of thing. So have a look at this playback templates page first to see is there something on there that's at least a good start as a playback template or an expression map or something else. Because if it's all installed on your computer, that will then load it for you automatically um, uh, when, when you just choose the playback template. Um, we've got some people from all over the place. Um, Crane, Seoul, so in South Korea. Um, Jeff <laughs> got distracted. Yes, but you can watch from the beginning. This session will now be available um, on, on our YouTube channel, so you can watch it whenever you like. And if you want to kind of follow along, just press pause. You can then follow along with everything uh, in this one as well. Um, how do I add the icons in the percussion labels? Oh, yes, I didn't show you some of those, did I? So let's have a look, quick look at those. So... In this particular project, there was a few labels and things that I changed. So left, centre, right, and the vocal percussion. So these initially, I think, were just voice, possibly soprano, but I think they were voice staves. So in setup mode, um, you have both the player label here. So you see this is voice left. And the player label is what is normally used for things like the parts uh, and the part labels. But then you have the effectively the instrument inside it, which is the staff label here, which says left in this case. So you click on these three little dots and do edit instruments. And that then says left and L for that singer. And this one, which is voice mid here, but it says center here, depending on how you want to label it and where. You can edit the name here and it says center and C in here. So when you're using this, if you were using it on a page, then the first name you would see would be the full name. And then the subsequent name would be here with L, C and R. And the vocal percussion is showing as V perk here and vocal percussion. But percussion staves in Dorico can also show in a number of different ways. So if you go to the library menu and layout options, and then you go to the players section for percussion, then you can say that the vocal percussion, because it's a percussion instrument, can show as a five line staff or as a grid. And if we show this as a drum grid, then you can see the, lo the long names here, or the full names, and then you can see the short names here. So on, a, on all of the subsequent staves, it will be showing the short names. And the same happens if you use the single line instruments option, where instead of a drum grid, it's showing all of that drum kit as single line instruments. So if you prefer to write for it this way, or even display it and print it this way, then you can do, and all of these are then single line instruments uh, shown in here. And you can set the orders of those. So, um, in fact, in the, the, the one you'll download, I've set a slightly different order for those. So if I put these back for a second. You can go into setup mode, and for that vocal percussion instrument, you can click on the three dots for that one, and do edit percussion kit. This is where you'll see all of the options set up for the percussion kit. And then you can choose any of these and do edit names. And in here, you can add the full name and the short name, where I've just added an emoji. Um, so, and I think I copied and pasted that. Find a website with emojis on it and copy and paste them into there. That's the quickest way of doing it, I think. Um, so I've done that for each of those, those instruments. And then for the drum grid, you can set the order that you want them to appear in. So if you would like maybe to appear higher up, uh, so it says, yeah, no, maybe, uh, bing bong, finger snaps, hand claps, stomp. And then for the single line instruments, you can also set an order. So again, let's move maybe up there so you can decide the order that you want them to be in depending on which of these layouts you're actually using on the score 
and then either the edit names for editing the, the, the names of those and showing the little icons, or however you want to, well, whatever you want to label them as, that, that's your choice. Um, why is there a key signature for the percussion part? Um, ah, yes, I must have added one by, by accident. So I think when I was adding the instrument, I probably told it it didn't that it was allowed to have one. But also, it's because in this particular case, the vocal percussion, I'm presuming, may get uh, melded into one of the other vocal staves. And originally, in this layout, I did it that way. So then I thought, actually, it might want one because then you don't have to show cautionaries when you're changing instruments, because otherwise it's like switching from a B flat to a C instrument and kind of you get some cautionaries show up that you don't want to. And I sort of want the vocal percussion to sort of still be like, that's why it doesn't have a clef, is because I sort of still want it to be part of that singer's um, clef, um, you know, with treble, bass, whatever they're using. And so I, I didn't want to add any extra ones in there. You can change it if you want to. You can edit the instrument itself. You can, of course, you, you can do them even uh, as manual options. So when you do Shift-K into here, you can add in a different key signature for this one. So, for example, you could say this one was atonal and do Alt-Enter, and then it would get rid of that one because the vocal percussion is now effectively atonal. That's sort of an override way of doing it, but setting up the instrument in the library um, manager is obviously better. Um, I will check in the in the template to see whether or not I've added a key signature for it, because I can't remember. Um, but yes, you probably don't if you're really using it as a percussion staff. And if you do need to change things, adding a tone like that is a, a quick workaround. Let me just check for any of the other comments. Um... And Dave, it's good to see you here as well. Uh, sorry, I, had, I didn't say hello. Uh, how long will the session last? I know, they go on a bit, don't they? I apologise. Uh, we are nearly done. Um, uh, yes, I may well, Jeff, be joining the ASMAC session next week. Um, so um, the American Society of Music Arrangers and Composers have a live stream next week, next week that uh, Frank Heckel is doing with Daniel Spreadbury. And I may also be in that one. So if you want to have a chat on that one, that would be next Tuesday. Yes, you've even written the details. Thank you. Uh, next Tuesday, 2nd of April at 12pm PDT, uh, UTC minus 7. Now, the confusing thing is the UK haven't changed our clocks yet. That's why we're now. Um, but we do this weekend. So um, happy Easter, everybody, for those who like that kind of thing, or chocolate, or hot cross buns. Um, and, um, yeah, we, we do change our clocks this weekend, so we'll be you know uh, more in line properly where we are with normally with the US. Um, do, do, do. Uh, Frank said yes on a Mac you can use the shortcut control command space to invoke the emoji panel from which you can choose and you can put in emojis that way yes you want to you want to do it that way great um, and yeah just checking the times so if you're going to watch the ASMAC session then it will be 9 o'clock in Germany next Tuesday 9pm and it will be 8pm in the UK by that point because we'll be in, in daylight saving for summertime. Some nicer weather would be nice. Thank you very much. Um, so I don't think there's any other comments. So um, if you have any questions, you can always email me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de and that'll land in the inbox and I'll have a look from that one. Um, don't forget, send me your switch stories, please. Um, also, you can save 30% on Cubase at the moment because there's an offer on for the next month. You can get the free Jacob Collier Choir. Um, so you can download the plugin that we've been talking about today. You can use it in Dorico SE for free as well if you want to. And I'll put all of these links underneath this video so that they are easy to find, along with the playback template that you will need if you want to follow along with this session, which is just here in the Native Instruments section on our playback templates page. Yes, try Dorico for yourself. Thank you. I have. And it's lovely. Anyway, uh, I'm waffling, so let's end the session for today. Any questions, email me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Thank you for watching.